continuing the instructions of Krishna to Arjuna. We have so far discussed about Krishna explaining the analytical knowledge of what is soul and what is body from different angles of vision Krishna has explained this to Arjuna now Krishna will describe what is buddhi yoga buddhi yoga means the knowledge of yoga by which one works without expecting to enjoy any results. This buddhi yoga means in simple words to work in Krishna consciousness or to work for the satisfaction of Krishna only. In this way one can become free from all bondage of work. In this endeavor of buddhi yoga there is no loss and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. What is the greatest danger in the human form of life? It is degradation to lower species. One who works in Krishna consciousness is never degraded to a lower life form. And such a person is sure to get at least a human birth in the next life. Material activities and their results end with the body. But work done in Krishna consciousness carries the person again to Krishna consciousness even after loss of the body. One is sure to have a chance in the next life of being born again as a human being either in the family of great cultured Brahmana or in a rich aristocratic family. By getting such a birth, a Krishna conscious person can further elevate himself. When one is situated in Krishna consciousness, all activities are on the absolute plane, spiritual platform. For they are no longer subject to any dualities like good and bad. In ordinary life we know somebody may do some good activities, punya, or others may do some sinful activities, bad activities which are called papa. But in Krishna consciousness there is no question of performing papa or punya. In Krishna consciousness, all activities are completely transcendental, spiritual. They are absolutely good for the performer. Now, the resolute purpose of a person in Krishna consciousness is based on knowledge by which he knows perfectly that Krishna is the root of all manifested causes. As watering the root of a tree automatically nourishes all the different parts of the tree, the leaves, the branches, the twigs, etc. Similarly, when a person works in Krishna consciousness, he can render the highest service to everyone, himself, his family, his society, his country, for that matter the entire humanity. 
that is because simply by satisfying krishna a krishna conscious person can satisfy everybody why because krishna is the root of the whole creation <clears throat> there are men of small knowledge who are very much attached to the flowery words of the vedas these portions of the vedas they recommend various types of rituals for getting some enjoyment in the future so such people they hope that they will take birth in heavenly planets in their next life where wine and women are available in plenty and material opulence is very very common now being desirous of sensual enjoyment and opulent life they think that this is the whole purpose of vedic wisdom now krishna warns that those who are attached to such sense enjoyment and material opulence they cannot have the resolute determination for devotional service now the vedas mainly deal with the subject of the three gunas and krishna warns that one should become transcendental to these three gunas if at all one is interested in krishna consciousness because by becoming transcendental to the three gunas one can become free from all dualities and anxieties for gain and safety krishna gives an example to help us understand this better he says just like all purposes served by a small well can be served at once by a great reservoir of water similarly all the purposes of the vedas can be served to one who knows krishna why because krishna is the supreme brahman what does this mean to understand the example it is said that in a village people generally have different wells for different purposes some particular well water is used for washing clothes some other well is used for drinking the water some other well water is used for doing some puja but if one goes to the river then that river water is good for all purposes the river water is good for drinking it's good for washing clothes it's good for taking bath it's good for doing abhishek of the deity for sacred purposes similarly if one knows the supreme brahman krishna then such a person need not execute the various different rituals mentioned in the vedas in different portions of the vedas because all the purposes of these rituals are served to one who knows the real purpose of the vedas the ultimate goal of the vedas what is the ultimate goal of the vedas the ultimate goal of the vedas is self realization what is self realization self realization means understanding krishna and one's eternal relationship with krishna this is what is self realization so revival of krishna consciousness is the highest perfection of vedic knowledge even though the vedas are describing elaborately so many different rituals so many different uh details about papa punya about uh spiritual understanding mm -hmm. still 
the real ultimate goal of the vedas is somehow lost when people become involved in executing the various rituals mentioned in the vedas so krishna clarifies the ultimate goal of the vedas is realizing krishna the supreme brahman hmm? now as regards the duties that are mentioned in the vedas the prescribed duties for every human being krishna tells arjuna that he should not neglect doing his prescribed duty at the same time he should do his prescribed duty without being attached to the results in this way one who is working can actually free himself from all bondage to work now later on it will be explained how there is a connection between the prescribed duties mentioned in the vedas and the ultimate goal of uh, self realization through freedom from material bondage but here krishna just explains any person who acts in krishna consciousness he very easily frees himself from the cycle of birth and death therefore everything should be done in krishna consciousness all activity should be done in krishna consciousness and in this way one can become free from material bondage now there are some people who are described by krishna as miserly people misers are those who do not know how to utilize the assets of riches which they acquire either by good fortune or by hard work they waste the assets that they have by not utilizing it properly uh, similarly krishna says like the misers unfortunate persons do not use their human energy in devotional service to krishna further krishna says <clears throat> a person engaged in devotional service becomes free from even all good and bad actions in this life by good actions is meant punya karma and by bad actions is meant papa karma uh, punya karma and papa karma do common people differentiate between the two and try to avoid papa because that entails suffering and try to do punya but both of them lead to material bondage that people do not understand so krishna explains that both pious and impious activities punya and papa lead to material bondage so to get out of material bondage one should simply engage in devotional service and that way one is guaranteed to become free completely from all bondage now krishna also describes that those who are great sages or devotees they free themselves from the bondage of all ac actions simply by engaging completely in devotional service in this way they become free from the cycle of birth and death and become eligible to enter into the vaikuntha planets now <clears throat> krishna also clarifies when he says arjuna you should perform your prescribed duties he also clarifies that the various duties mentioned in the vedas 
which involve performing different rituals, different sacrifices, different kinds of charity, yajna dana tapa. These are meant for people who do not take to Krishna consciousness. Uh, why? Because anybody engaged in devotional service or Krishna consciousness has already attained perfection. And therefore, there is no need for such a person to perform any of the rituals or sacrifices or charities, etc. A Krishna conscious person easily becomes fixed in his consciousness and attains the perfect state of samadhi. The goal of all these prescribed duties is to attain samadhi or the perfect state of consciousness, fixed consciousness. So a Krishna conscious person, simply by engaging in devotional service, he attains that state of samadhi without any separate endeavor. Then Arjuna, he asks Krishna about the symptoms of a person who is situated in fixed Krishna consciousness. Such a person is called Sthita Pragya. So Krishna describes the various characteristics of a Sthita Pragya in the remainder of the chapter, second chapter. First of all he tells the first characteristic of a person who is fixed in Krishna consciousness is that such a person gives up all varieties of desires for sense enjoyment. Now these desires for sense enjoyment generally arise from mental concoction. Now if a person gives up this business of mental concoction and thereby becomes uh, free from desires for sense enjoyment, then his mind becomes free to be absorbed in devotional service. And by engaging in devotional service fully with his mind and attention focused on uh, serving Krishna for Krishna's satisfaction, then such a person will find satisfaction inside. He no longer has to strive for getting satisfaction from some external sense objects. Such a person is said to be fixed in Krishna consciousness. Now, Srila Prabhupada explains, artificially nobody can stop sense desires by suppressing such desires. But by engaging in devotional service, one naturally is able to uh, become free from sense enjoyment and engaging in devotional service will help one to realize that he is an eternal servant of Krishna. As an eternal servant of Krishna, he simply engages in devotional service to Krishna and by doing so, he finds full satisfaction within himself simply in engaging in devotional service. He doesn't have to do anything else separately to get satisfaction. Now further Krishna describes another characteristic of a person who is fixed in Krishna consciousness. He says, one who is not disturbed in the mind even amidst the threefold miseries. Material existence means always there is this tapatraya, miseries due to one's own body and mind, miseries due to uh, other persons giving trouble, disturbing somebody, or due to natural calamities. 
So three kinds of miseries are always there in material existence. At different times one experiences different kinds of miseries. But a person who is not disturbed in the mind even when such miseries are present, neither the Krishna conscious person is elated when there is some happiness, material happiness. And also a Krishna conscious person is free from attachment, fear and anger. Such a person is said to be fixed in Krishna consciousness. Now, how is it that a person fixed in Krishna consciousness is neither attachment nor detachment for anything material? That is because his life is dedicated to the service of Lord Krishna. And such service is everything for a devotee, for a person in Krishna consciousness. So he is not bothered about uh, happiness and distress due to material uh, conditions. Now in the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, neither praising something good nor despising something evil, such a person is described as firmly fixed in Krishna consciousness. Now, uh, Srila Prabhupada explains, as long as one is in the material world, there is always the possibility of experiencing something good or bad. You cannot totally avoid hmm, different uh, good or bad situations. Because this world, material world, is a world of duality. It is not that always there are only miseries. Neither is it that there will be only some kind of happiness. Both happiness and distress both come and go according to Kala. So Krishna says that one should be unaffected by such dualities. A person fixed in Krishna consciousness is not affected by such dualities of good and evil in this world because he is simply concerned with Krishna who is all good absolute. Krishna is absolute. Whereas every situation in the material world is a relatively good or bad situation. There is no absolute good in this material world. Absolute good means independent of certain situations or circumstances or certain uh, conditions. Unconditionally, how is it possible to have absolute goodness? That is only possible in Krishna consciousness. That is what is explained here. Then further, Krishna explains, one who is able to withdraw his senses from enjoyable sense objects as the tortoise draws its limbs within the shell is firmly fixed in perfect consciousness. Krishna is describing the various characteristics of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. He gives this example of a tortoise. So it is explained that the test of a self-realized soul is that he is able to control his senses according to his plan. Sense control is a very 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 difficult thing. This will be explained in more detail in the later chapter. But here Krishna particularly mentions 
that the difficult uh, difficulty in controlling the senses he highlights that he says that most people are generally servants of the senses and they are unable to control their senses uh, when it is required to restrain the senses they are unable to do so uh, they are always directed by the dictation of the senses whenever the senses demand they yield to the demands why is this said because anybody interested in spiritual life for them there are many injunctions in the vedas some are do nots and some are do's you should do this in spiritual practice or spiritual life you should not do something else so whole list of do's and don'ts now unless one is able to follow these do's and don'ts one cannot actually uh, restrict oneself uh, from the demands of the senses so consequently spiritual life is generally very difficult for people who try to follow such uh, injunctions of the scriptures now the example of the tortoise is given to help us understand how a krishna conscious person doesn't have the difficulty which common people who try to follow the vedic injunctions have the example of the tortoise is that the tortoise can at any moment wind up his senses within his shell or exhibit them at any time for any particular purpose similarly a krishna conscious person is able to use his senses for some particular purpose in devotional service otherwise he is able to withdraw his senses without being disturbed by any uh, sense attractions so that is the advantage for a person engaged in krishna consciousness completely that is senses will not disturb him sense objects cannot distract him from krishna consciousness <clears throat> now if somebody tries to simply restrain the senses from sense enjoyment what happens krishna explains that do not try to artificially restrain the senses it will not work what is the reason krishna says this is because the taste for sense enjoyment remains in the mind even if one externally tries to stop the senses but to actually conquer the senses one should stop indulging the senses by experiencing the higher taste of krishna consciousness what does this mean prabhupad gives an example just like devotees who practice eating only krishna prasadam now by practicing eating only krishna prasadam devotees are very easily able to control their tongue by not indulging in eating something which is not prasadam why because by eating prasadam they are able to develop a higher taste what is this higher taste this higher taste enables them to relish prasadam and thereby lose their taste for other eatables which are non prasadam similarly with all the senses in krishna consciousness we engage our senses in devotional service in fact the very definition of bhakti is engaging the senses in service of the supreme lord who is the master of the senses 
ಋಷಿಕೇನ ಋಷಿಕೇಶ ಸೇವನಂ ಭಕ್ತಿ ರುಚ್ಯತೆ ಸೊ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೈದರ್ ಟ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ನಾರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಬೈ ಎಂಗೇಜಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ರಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವೇ ನೌ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿವೋಷನಲ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಬೈ ದೇ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಎ ಹೈಯರ್ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ of krishna consciousness and very easily lose taste for all other types of sense enjoyment now krishna also explains the danger of not controlling all the senses he says the senses are so strong that they forcibly carry away the mind even of a man of discrimination who is endeavoring to control them if somebody does not try to control the senses one who is interested in spiritual life does not endeavor to control the senses thinking that somehow they can do some so called practice of meditation and at the same time indulge the senses in some enjoyment material enjoyment such a person actually is uh, mistaken that by doing so in course of time somehow he will be able to uh, properly achieve self realization krishna is warning that uh, the indulgence in sense enjoyment even in a restricted way will carry away mind forcibly towards simply all the time indulging in sense enjoyment therefore uh, krishna says one should restrain his senses keeping them under full control always it's not like sometimes i may indulge in sense enjoyment and sometimes i may restrict the senses and only do some spiritual practice no that's not going to work hmm? so one who fixes his consciousness upon krishna completely engaging always in devotional service only such a person can control his senses not the others now there is an example given in the bhagavatam there was one great sage durvasa muni was a very powerful yogi and there was a devotee one king ambarisha now durvasa muni once became unnecessarily angry against ambarish maharaj and he tried to express his anger against ambarish maharaj but in doing so he lost control over his senses and ultimately he was defeated by ambarish maharaj who silently tolerated the sages injustices and emerged victorious simply because of his being fixed in devotional service so the conclusion is the senses can be completely controlled only on the strength of devotional service and not by any other method that is the conclusion of this elaborate description of sense control by krishna now krishna also wants what happens for a person who contemplates on the objects of the senses it begins by just contemplating on the objects of the senses gradually a person develops attachment and from such attachment lust develops from lust anger arises from anger there is delusion from delusion there is bewilderment of memory from bewilderment of memory there is intelligence loss of intelligence and when intelligence is lost one falls down into the material pool so a sincere devotee of the lord he's 
completely gives up all types of sense enjoyment because of his higher taste for spiritual enjoyment in the association of the Lord. So he doesn't risk even contemplating on the objects of the senses, let alone indulge in actual sense gratification. Uh, so this is the secret of success. So Krishna says, one who is not in Krishna consciousness, however powerful he may be in some yoga practice by which he tries to artificially suppress his senses, he is sure to ultimately fail. Just like the example of Durvasamuni. This is because even though he may try to restrain his senses, the slightest thought of sense pleasure will agitate his mind and he will be forced to satisfy the dictation of his senses. So, uh, <clears throat> the danger of uh, not being Krishna conscious is clearly pointed out by Krishna in this uh, portion of the uh, second chapter. Finally, Krishna concludes by telling, if one is not Krishna conscious, he cannot have peace of mind. Hmm? And without peace of mind, there is no possibility of happiness. Therefore, uh, only by Krishna consciousness can one become completely peaceful. And in such a peaceful state of consciousness, Krishna says, uh, one is able to actually uh, become completely uh, fixed up in Krishna consciousness. A Krishna conscious person is naturally completely peaceful. It's not that he's not having any desires. Desires may be there, but those desires don't agitate his mind. He does not strive to satisfy such desires which may arise uh, within his uh, mind. He does not become agitated. He does not strive to satisfy, satisfy his desires. And if one is situated in such a Krishna conscious state, even at the time of death, then such a person, Krishna says, can enter into the kingdom of God without any doubt. So this is the ultimate perfection of Krishna consciousness. Uh, to be able to be fixed up in Krishna consciousness before death comes and remain in such a state at the time of death, one is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom of God. Never again to take birth in this material world, never again will he suffer any material uh, miseries. This is the ultimate liberation uh, through Krishna consciousness. This will be further uh, explained in great detail in the following chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. We'll stop here. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.